Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this design, uh, this Triceratops design. It was designed by me. So, here they are, the Triceratops. Ooh, they look I'm so happy with the design. I've been wanting to make a Triceratops for a while, and I finally did it, and I think it turned out perfect. Um, so this was the first one I made, and then this is the final version. Uh, I just did some slight fixes, and I like how he looks better, so I'm going to be showing you how to make him today. But, yeah. So this is a very fairly easy design, I feel. Um, I feel like the hardest part might be doing the legs, just because when I made the cow, I know a lot of people got confused on how I did the legs, but I'll try to go slow and explain really well. Um, but other than that part, this it's fairly easy. I feel like it's one of my easier designs. I know some of my designs have a lot of attaching and stuff. Um, this one actually doesn't have too much attaching. We pretty much stitch these onto the main body, and then um, we just attach the horns, pretty much. So it's not too bad. And yeah, I think it's absolutely adorable. I love dinosaurs so much. I don't know why or like the concept of dinosaurs, I guess. So I've been making a few dinosaur designs and I know you guys saw my Stegosaurus design and you guys have been asking for it. So um, I don't have the Stegosaurus pattern written down yet, but I did write down the pattern for this guy. So I thought I would give him to you really quickly before I forget how to make him because I made him like this week. So yeah, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to make him. Uh, as always, the band count and the pattern and everything is in the description. Um, I forgot to do the, <laughs> the band count before I started filming, so if you're worried about how many bands he takes, check the description. And yeah, I guess that's it. So we'll get started. So of course you're going to need a hook. Um, I'm using my double-ended hook just because I like this hook, but we only use one end so you don't need a double-ended hook. Um, you're going to want something to mark your rows with. You can use C-clips, S-clips, whatever you have. Um, you just need something to mark where you start and begin. It doesn't, like, it doesn't matter what it is. And then for the colors today, for today's dinosaur, I'm going to be using mint, and then purple, and then, um, the sweet's purple. Yeah, I'm using these colors. And then for the spikes, I'll still be using white. So this is just for my main dinosaur color. And yeah, so I guess we'll get started. So where we get, st oh, you're also going to need stuffing. I always forget to mention, you're going to need something to stuff your dinosaur with. I usually use cotton balls, but in this guy, because I actually made him while I was at work, I stuffed him with a napkin. So whatever you have works. But yeah, so I think that is it. So we will get started. Um, so yeah, let me pick up some bands and then I guess we will get started. This is actually like my fourth time filming the intro. I don't know what it is lately, but I've been so awkward with intros. And I don't know why it's just been, it's been interesting, I guess. I don't know. I've just been struggling with intros. But we're ready to start, so. Oh, also I just want to mention my nails because if you're wondering what the heck is on them, it's supposed to be pumpkins and then they have like googly eyes. Um. I'm not the best nail artist. I always get some comments that are like, oh my god, your nails are ugly. And I'm like, I never claimed to be good at nail art. So, you know, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that in case you were wondering what the heck is on my nails. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll get started. So to start, you're going to want to wrap a band three times around your hook. So this is one, two, three. And then you're going to want to pull a band through everything on your hook. And then you'll push the back one over the front one. And in case you're wondering, you already know what we're doing. Um, we're doing a triple cap band with um, six stitches in it. But if you don't know what you're do we're doing, I'm going to keep explaining. I just thought I would mention that in case every someone here is more advanced and already wants to get ahead. But yeah. So this is one stitch. So we're going to go back in and we're going to do five more. So we're going to go back through the cap band. And then we're going to pull a band through... Just the cap band. Put both ends back on our hook. Then you'll push the back one over the front one. And then you'll push the loop from last time over as well. And we're just going to do that exact same thing we just did four more times. So we have six loops in total. So you'll go back through the, the cap band. You'll pull a band through just the cap band. Then you'll put both ends back on your hook. And then you push the back one over the front one. And then you push the loop from last time over as well. I'll show you that one more time. So you pull it through just the cap band. Both ends back on, back one over the front one, and then you do the loop from last time. 
and we just do that two more times and then we'll have six stitches. So if you don't know how to tell if you have six stitches, I'll show you in a second. It's easier to tell how many stitches you have when they're different colors because you can just count how many colors you have. But I will show you. So if you don't know if you have six stitches, I know I do, but I'll show you how to count them. You're going to start by counting the one on your hook. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And this one might look like a loop, but it's not. This is the loop. Um, I can tell easily because all of my bands are like different colors. So yeah. But once you've made sure you have six um, stitches, instead of going into the cap band, you're going to go into the first loop and we're going to do the same thing. So we just pull a band through just the first, just the loop, both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. I don't know why, my light feels like it's in the way. Let me just adjust some things. I always could pause, I always do this when I'm filming, I'm like, I could pause to adjust my light and things, but I never do. It was just getting in the way. Okay. Now I can see better. <laughs> okay, so that was the first part, but for this next row, we're going to be increasing everything. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And if you don't know what an increase is, I will show you. So this loop already has one stitch in it, but because we're increasing, we're going to go back into that same loop and do another stitch. So like that. And that'll be an increase. So an all an increase is, is basically you go into the one loop and you do two stitches. So this is the next loop. Then I'll do one stitch. Then I'll go back in and do another. And that's an increase. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. And I need more bands. Okay. I'm trying to keep them all in the same order. <laughs> so I'm trying to see like what order I need to pick them up in. Okay. But yeah, we're just going to keep increasing everything. So all you do is two stitches in each loop, and that's an increase. And we just do this until we get back to the C-clip. Almost there. So once you get to the loop that has the C-clip on it, you're just going to make a stitch on the loop that has the C-clip. And then you'll get the C-clip, take it off this loop, and move it up onto this loop. Like that. And now if we count around, we should be at 12 loops. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. So that was it for that row. So for the next row, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be increasing every third. So it's kind of the same thing we did last row, but we're going to do two single stitches and then an increase. And I am just picking up bands yet again. You know, I already know my voice is going to be dying after this tutorial because it always is because I have to talk for like an hour or two straight. But then... After this tutorial, I have to go to work, so I talk a lot. That I talk a lot there as well. So, rip my voice by the end of today. Okay, I just nearly dropped my camera, so I had to pause, but it's fine. So, like I said, this row we're gonna be increasing every third. So we're gonna do two single stitches, and what a single stitch is is basically it's just when you do one stitch per loop. Um, so not like the increase where we do two. I'm trying not to be confusing. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be increasing every third, so this is the first single loop, so we're going to do another single stitch. So we just do one stitch. And then the next one will be an increase, so we put two stitches in this loop. And we just keep doing this until we get back to the C-clip. So you do two single stitches and then an increase, so one, two, and then we're going to do an increase, so you put two stitches in this loop. And we just keep doing this all the way around. So single stitch, single stitch, and then we'll do an increase, and 
and we'll do a single stitch. I hope you're following along with what I'm doing. Uh, not, not exactly following along at same speed, it just meant you're not lost. Okay. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And once again, we'll move the C-clip up onto the span. So you just take it out of the old loop and move it up to the loop that is on your hook. So if we count around now, we should be at 16 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you should be at 16 loops. And once you've made sure you're at 16 loops, we're going to get started on the next row. So for the next row, we're going to increase every fourth. So it'll be three single stitches and then an increase. And we do this all the way around once again until we get back to the C-clip. And I'm just picking up some bands. I really always try so hard to explain well my tutorials, so I'm, I feel bad if you guys watch a lot of my tutorials though and then you already know what to do, but then again that's why I put my patterns in the description. But yeah. Oh, we actually don't need that one, okay. I, mean, I just flicked away the band, I don't want you guys to be like, oh what didn't she need? No, I, I was just um, fixing the color order in my finger, but yeah. Um. Okay, so like I said, we're increasing every fourth, so this will be the first single stitch, the one that has a secret on it. And then this next one will be the second one. Yeah. Accidentally let go. And then this one will be the third one. And then on the fourth loop you do an increase. So you do two stitches in that loop. Like that. And then once again we do two sing- not two single stitches, we do three single stitches. So one, two, three, and then we do an increase. And we just keep doing this all the way around. So we do three single stitches, so one, two, three, and then on the fourth loop we do an increase. We are almost back to the C-clip. need to pick up a few more bands. I always feel like my tutorials take longer when I do multiple colors, but I really like how this guy looks with multiple colors, so... Oh well. But yeah. Okay. We do an increase. Okay, and then once we get to the C-clip, once again, we'll just be making a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it. And then we will move the C-clip up onto the band that is on our hook. Like that. So now if you count around, you should have 20 loops, so we'll count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you should be at 20 loops. So for this next row, we're going to do one row around um, normal, so just all single stitches. We're not increasing or decreasing, we're just doing one row around um, the thing we have. So at the end of this row, you should still be at 20 loops. Um, but yeah, we're just doing single stitches all the way around. And I'm just picking up bands yet again. Okay. So like I said, we're just doing single stitches all the way around. I'm really liking this color combo. I was so iffy. I was like, is it gonna... Because like, on the other dinosaur, the yellow one I made, um, it was kind of all like yellows and oranges. And then this one has like a blue in it. I was like, oh, is it gonna look bad? Or is it going to be like too like weird with like one color that is in like purpley? But it looks so nice. Like I'm so excited for this dinosaur. You look so good. But yeah, we're just doing single stitches. And that's why I was talking because I don't really need to explain. We're just doing one stitch in each loop until we get back to the C-clip. 
I feel like my allergies are mixing with me talking so much and it's just like my voice is not going to survive. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Picking up more bands. I'm trying to think if I have anything to talk about, but I really don't. Um, I'm hoping after these tutorials, though, I'm going to do this one and then there'll be another one after it because I usually post like two tutorials at a time. Um, but after these two, I think Halloween designs are coming up. I absolutely love Halloween, even though I kind of hate horror stuff, but I like the, the spirit of Halloween, I guess. Or like the fun part, I guess, where you just like dress up and then... I mean, when you're younger, you would go trick-or-treating, but I don't know. To me, ha Halloween's just kind of like a fun, pointless holiday. Not like Christmas or something where you end up seeing a bunch of your family. And then it's really awkward. I don't know. To me, Halloween's just like fun. Like, even if you don't go trick-or-treating or go to a party or anything, it's just a fun holiday to be excited for. I don't know. I like Halloween. Or, like, you can bake something that's, like, Halloween. I know, like, me and my siblings are already, like, planning what we're gonna bake for Halloween because we like baking, so... Yeah. I'm super excited for Halloween. Once you get to the band that has a C-clip on it, you'll just make a stitch and then move your C-clip up. And like I said, after that last row, you should still have 20 loops if you count around. I'm not gonna count around because I know I did it correctly, but if you want to double check, you're gonna want to make sure you have 20. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to make all the legs. So this is probably the harder part if you, I don't know. It's not that hard. I just feel like in my cow tutorial, I explained it so confusingly, confusingly, I guess. So I'm going to try really hard right now to explain it well. So you guys can all have your dinosaur legs come out okay. I always try my best to explain well. It's just sometimes I feel like my brain's just like gone and the, and the tutorials don't come out that well. It just happens sometimes, man. But yeah. So basically the way I like to think of it is we're going to need four legs, right? We have 20 loops. So it's going to be five loops per leg. Um, but we, because of how we make them, we're going to do four single stitches and then we're going to do a weird chain thing and then we'll like connect it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is the first loop. So one two oh wait it's the wrong color i didn't do anything wrong i'm just picky about my color pattern wait is that still the wrong color i don't even know what color i'm on okay so 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 this was the first single stitch the one we just did is the second single stitch three Four. So after you did four single stitches, we're going to do this weird thing to make the back part of the leg. So we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on, and instead of putting the back one over the front one, we're just going to chain another one up. So you'll just pull a band through everything on your hook, both ends back on, and then we're just going to turn and we're going to go into the band that has a C-clip on it. We're going to pull a band through everything on our hook, and then put the back one over the front one. And then we'll move the C-clip up onto the span. And that's the weird leg bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do two rows around this thing we just made. So I'll show you. So this one already has a stitch in it, but we're just going to do single stitches all the way around. So single stitch all the way around. And this row is the harder one because... um kind of hard to see which loops are what but there should be about six loops and then there'll be these two weird chain bits in the back and you're just going to want to go into the top part of that chain and then make a stitch on that and this is much easier to see if you are using different colors Now you should be back at the band that has a C-clip on it, and you'll just make a stitch once again, and then move the C-clip up. So that row is probably the hardest two rows, just because it's hard to see. But you should have six loops, so if you count around, you should be at six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're just going to do one more row of just single stitches around this. So just do a bunch of single stitches. All the way around until we get back to the C-clip. Eh. And 
And once you get to the band that has a seagull on it, you'll just make a stitch and then move it up. Okay, so that's the second row. And if you count around, you should still be at six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're just going to close this leg up by decreasing everything until it's closed. But I'm going to pick up some bands really quick. Okay. Like I said, we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we're going to... We are going to do is going to be a decrease, and if you don't know what a decrease is, it's kind of really hard to show you because it's super tight. But you grab the front part of one loop, and then the back part of the next loop, and then you make a stitch on that. And that's what a decrease is, and it's really hard to show you because it's so tight. Um, but yeah, you could take the C clip out at this point if it starts getting in the way. But I think we're on our last decrease anyways. So once you have the last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Put both ends back on, and then push the back one over the front one. And then pull tight. Okay, I had to pause my camera because it was about to time out. But, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's like a dog barking or something. I'm sorry about that. But basically, after you pull tight, you're just going to want to hide the tail into the leg so you'll just go up and up like through the leg and then pull the tail band in like that and there's our first leg so we're going to want to repeat the exact same thing we just did um for all the legs if you are confused though I'm going to show you how to do it one more time and then I might go off camera to finish the rest of the legs because we literally just do the same thing for all the legs. But yeah. So if you made my cow, you probably noticed that was very similar. They're just a little bit fatter. But yeah. I'll try to explain one more time in case you were confused. Also, if you're confused, maybe the pattern in the description will help you because there's also a pattern in the description. Maybe reading it will make more sense. I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyways, we're going to start the next leg. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the next loop that doesn't have anything stitched into it. And once again, we'll go forward um, four times. So we're going to do four single stitches. So that's one. This is two, three, and then four. So once you've done four single stitches in the next loop, instead of doing a single stitch, you're going to chain, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, put both ends back on, and then you'll pull another band through everything on your hook and put both ends back on. And then you're going to turn and you're going to go into the first loop, and then you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, and then put the back one over the front one. And we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. Like that. So now we're just gonna do a round around this, a row around this thing we just made. So we're just gonna be doing single stitches. So we'll go into the next loop. And it's kind of hard, really hard to see what your loops are. So just be careful. And you'll just do single stitches. This one might wanna hide. It's the last single stitch we did before the chain thing. And then you'll have these two chain things in the back, and you're just going to want to go through the top part of that loop, and then just make a stitch. And then we should be back at the C-clip, so now what we're going to do is we'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it, and move it up. And now if you count around, you should have six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I believe, was that row two? I'm so lost, hold up. Okay, we barely did one row. So that was one row around. And we're gonna do one more around this and then we're gonna close up the leg. So I'm just gonna pick up some more bands because I already know I don't have enough bands on my finger. Mm. Okay. 
So yeah, we're just gonna do another row of single stitches around this. And at the end of this row, you should still be at six loops. So once you finish doing single stitches all the way around and you're back at the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it and move it up. So now we're going to be decreasing everything until it's closed. So once again, you're going to want to grab the front part of one loop, the back part of the next loop because that's a decrease, and then just make a stitch. And like I said, we're decreasing absolutely everything until it's closed. And you can take your C-clip out at this point. But once you have the very last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, put the back one over the front one, and then pull tight. And then we'll go up into the leg, and we'll just pull that C-clip in. Well, the C-clip in, the band in. Getting all my loom terms mixed up. <laughs> we'll just pull it in. Like that. And you have two legs. So we're going to want to repeat the thing we just did two more times for the other two legs. Um, if you're confused, you can rewind until the last two times I did it and just watch it again. But I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to do the other two legs, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the next steps. Okay, so after you finish all four legs, it should look something like this. Bunch of little stubby dino legs. And now we're going to stuff him. So basically what we're going to do is you're just going to get whatever you have for your stuffing. And... Just we'll stuff him with it. You can use anything. You can use polyfill, cotton balls. I use napkins sometimes when I'm desperate. So just whatever you have. And you're just going to want to stick it in your dinosaur. And as you can see, he's not exactly closed up because of how the legs are. So we're going to do something just to close up the underneath. So basically what we're going to do is you can kind of tell there's this little awkward space between the legs. You're just going to go through that stitch and then you're going to chain up three. So one, two, and then three. And then we're just going to turn our hook or I might just flip my hook around. And then we're going to go to the top part right here. We're going to go through that little, you can see that there's a stitch right in the middle. And then you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Put the back one over the front one and pull tight. Like that. And we're going to do the same thing going this way. So let me pick up some more bands. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing but going this way. So you'll just come into between the legs here. You'll just pick a spot. You'll chain up three. So one, two three, then we'll flip our hook, and then we'll come to the top part here, pick a spot in the middle, pull a band through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And then we just hide those tails into the dinosaur. Usually you can just pull them in and they'll stay. So you'll just pull them up into the dinosaur and then they'll usually stay in there. And then there's our dinosaur body. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the head and then the tail onto the body. So... Yeah. Let me pick up some more pans. But basically we're just going to stitch into the back of your dinosaur and then the front to make the head and the butt. Well, the tail. Yeah. That was also quite the voice crack right there. Um... But you're just going to want to decide whatever your front and back is. It's pretty much even on all sides, so it's just preference. But yeah. But once you've picked up all your bands, as I'm taking 50 years to do, we're going to start by making the tail. I usually do the tail and then the head. I don't know why. I've just been doing it like this. So I'm going to pick what side I want to be the back and then what side I want to be the front. Uh, I think this will be the back. And what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch in a circle about right here, um, the seven stitches big, right here. 
So I'm just gonna start. It doesn't really matter where you start. You don't want the tail to be too like super low. So I'm gonna go about right here. I'm just gonna make a stitch. And like I said, we're just basically gonna be making a circle. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go. But you're gonna want to make it about seven stitches big. So hard to see where I want to go. Oh, I went off camera, but yeah, we're just stitching in a circle on the back. And I don't go in the exact spot every time, so it doesn't really matter. If you're not going in the exact places I am, you're just going to want to make a circle on the back of your dinosaur. That is seven stitches big. So, once again, when you want to see when you're at seven stitches, you're just going to count backwards. So, start by counting the one on your hook. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you have seven stitches, instead of going into the dinosaur, you're going to go into the first loop. And you'll just make a stitch. And then we'll put the C-clip on this loop. Like that. And now we're just going to do one row around this circle we just made. So we're just going to do one row of normal stitches. So after this row we should still be at seven loops. And once again, I am picking up hands. <laughs> oh my gosh. But once again... Yeah, just do one row around this. All single stitches. I don't know if my camera isn't focused. Might not have been focused, sorry about that. Once you get to the band that has a C-clip on it, you'll just make a stitch and then move the C-clip on to that loop. So if you count around, you should still have seven. I'm not going to count around because I'm pretty sure I have seven. But now what we're going to be doing is we're just going to decrease every other until it's closed. So we're going to do a single stitch. We'll do a decrease, single stitch, decrease. So this first one's a single stitch, so the next one will be a decrease. So we'll grab the front part of one loop, the back part of the next loop, and then we'll make a stitch. And then we'll do a single stitch. And we'll do a decrease. Then we'll do a single stitch. And then on the band that has a C-clip on it, we'll be doing a single stitch as well. And you can move up your C-clip, but I'm just going to take mine out because we're almost done. And I need more bands, yet again. But the next stitch we do is going to be a decrease. Then it'll be a single stitch. And then this should be the last decrease. So once you have the last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Put the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you'll just hide tail into the tail. It's funny. And then that's it. You're not going to want to pull the tail in really like harsh because we want our tail to be kind of pointy. So I usually just like gently tuck it in and it should look like this. So now we're going to do the head and it's kind of very similar to the stitch to the tail. We stitch in a bunch of times and then we just do some rows and then that's pretty much it. Um, so it's almost the same like I said. Um, but this time we're going to stitch in a circle of eight times instead of seven, so it's a little bit bigger. And then, yeah. So you can start stitching, I guess, because I'm still picking up bands. But we need some bands for the head. Okay. I finished. So like I said, we're just going to be doing the same thing. We're going to stitch in the front here 
about eight times in a circle. Um, and you don't want your head to be super low, so you're going to want to go a little higher than you did with the tail. Uh, I'm going to go like right here. And we're just going to make a circle. We're going to stitch in a circle about eight times. So, yeah. I'm usually pretty good at judging it, so I usually don't worry if I'm putting my stitches like too far or too close together because I'm usually pretty good at judging how far apart they need to be. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, and then once again you'll count around to make sure you have eight stitches when you're back at the start. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once you've made sure you have eight stitches, you're going to go into the first loop and then you'll make a stitch and then we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. Like that. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be increasing every third loop. So we're going to do two single stitches and then an increase just like we did for the body, but this time we're just doing it on the head. So this is the first single stitch, this next one will be two, so that's two single stitches, so the next one's an increase, we just keep doing this all the way around, so we do two single stitches, so one, two, and then we do an increase. And then there's, and then after that last increase, it's just single stitches until the end because the third stitch would technically be the band that has a C-clip on it, and we don't want to do any increase on that one, so we're just going to do a single stitch and then move the C-clip up. So after that last row, you should be at um, 10 loops. So if you count around, you should have 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that. And now we're going to do one row normal around this, so we're just going to do around, around this. I don't know what to say. I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah. Okay. So we're just going to do around, around this, so one row normal. Just single stitches all the way around. I was thinking of putting this dinosaur on my Etsy because I already have two, but man, I really like his colors. <laughs> I probably won't sell him. Single stitches until we get back to the C-clip. It's taking a bit. Okay, so once we get to the C-clip, we'll just make a stitch on the man that has the C-clip on it. And then move it up. Like that. And now what we're going to do is we are going to decrease two on the top. So it, this may or may not be the same for you depending on where you started your circle. But basically I can tell I'm going to decrease on these loops back here. So for me it's the last four loops. For you it might be somewhere else just because of where you started your circle. But basically... On the top of your dinosaur, whatever those four loops are, those are the ones you want to decrease. And it'll be single the re single stitches the rest of the time. And I'm picking up bands again. I feel like most of this tutorial I've been picking up bands quite a bit. And it just takes me longer because I'm trying to put them in the correct order. But it's worth it because he looks amazing. But yeah, so we'll do single stitches until we get to the top of our dinosaur, and that may be different for me or for you, depending on where you started your circle. But 
But once you get to the top of your dinosaur, and those are the four loops you want to decrease, you're just going to do two, de two decreases in the row right on top. And then we should be back at the C-clip. And you'll just make a stitch on the man that has the C-clip on it. And then move your C-clip up. And now if you count around, we should be at eight loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And now we're going to want to put a little stuffing in our head right now. In this guy's head right now. I forgot to do this on the last one. But just putting a tiny bit of stuffing in really helps. Just with the shape and everything. So you'll just put a tiny bit of stuffing in right now. Okay. So what we're going to do for this next row is we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. And at this point you can take your sequel out. So we're just decreasing absolutely everything until it's closed. So once you have the very last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, put the back one over the front one, and pull tight. Okay. Now usually what I do for this one is the same one as I do for the tail where I pull it in but I don't pull it like in super bad because I don't want his face to be super smushy. I want his face to have some point to it. So I usually don't pull it in like all the way, all the way. That way his face is a little bit pointy. Like that. I'm just going to go adjust some things. Okay. So I finished pulling the tail in and I'm happy with his head. I didn't do anything. I just pulled the tail in and then squished his face a little bit. Um, but now we're going to do the very last thing, which is just to make this thing. And it's pretty simple. I thought, I feel like I say the same thing so much. I'm, just, Yeah. But basically, you're just going to want to pick up your bands. Which I should have done while I had the video paused, but I forgot. But, yeah. You're also going to want to get your white bands if you don't have those already. Um, I have to go grab mine. I forgot to bring them. Okay. But we don't need white until the very end, so... That's good. Okay. But we're going to stitch across the head. Ooh. Ooh, that's some nasty blur. Okay. We're going to just basically stitch across this top part of the head seven times. Now another thing is you don't want to put this thing too far back. You want them to have a little bit of head space. So you don't want to go like right here. You want to go a little bit more forward. So not even on this one. I would probably... Hmm, you really want to be pretty forward. You're probably going right here. And I'll just make a stitch. And you're going to want to go where you want it to start and end. So as you can see where that is. And then you just go across and it should be about seven times. Usually I don't count until I get to the other side. Right here. Okay, so now we just want to go backwards and make sure oops, make sure you don't let go of all the loops. But you're just going to want to count backwards and make sure you have seven loops. So you'll start by counting the one on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once you've made sure you have seven loops stitched across the head, and as you can see, I have quite a bit of space in the back. It's kind of almost like two rows. But you want it to be like that because on this guy, when I was making him earlier, I accidentally put this too far forward and he looked 
so bad. So you want to have a little space in the back of the head. But now we're just going to turn, so we're going this way, we're just going to turn this way. And on this first loop here, so, wait, <laughs> hold up. Uh, hold up. Okay, yeah, so on this first loop, when we turn, this one's going to be a single stitch. And then on the second one, this one's going to be an increase, so we'll put two, sti two stitches in this loop, because that's what an increase is. And then we're going to do a single stitch. And then we're going to do another increase. Need more bands hit again. We're almost done though. We're so close. Okay, so after we do that increase, we're going to do another single. And then once again, we do an increase on this very last one. Like that. So now his thing should be looking something like this. And then we're going to go back across. So we're just going to, we're facing this way. We're just going to turn our hook this way. And we're just going to do single stitches all the way across until we get to the other side. So we'll just do single stitches. All the way into the other side. So we're just doing single stitches across. That's why I'm not really explaining because we've been doing this a bunch. So just a lot of single stitches. I am out of bands yet again. I think I'm barely going to have enough bands because I've brought only so much Sweets Purple over out of my case. And I think I'm going to have like exactly enough. Which is so satisfying. When you like run out of bands right when you finish your creation or whatever. But yeah. You're going to want to make sure you go all the way to the end on this side, because sometimes the very last single loop might look not look like one, but it is. So once we went across now, just doing single stitches all the way across, and we're at the other side, we're going to turn our hook again, and this row is the row that we're going to be adding the little spiky thingies. So you're going to want to get your white. So we'll get some white out. We don't need a lot of white, so just get a little bit of white. And basically what we're going to do is every other stitch or like every other stitch we make is going to have one of these bumpy thingies on them. So this is the first one. So on this next one, I think on the next one, oh, I don't remember. Uh, let me check. Okay, not on the next one, but on the one after. So we're going to turn and oh, also this row we're increasing every other. So every other stitch we do is going to be an increase as well as we're adding these white bands. But on this first one, we'll just do one, but then we're also going to be increasing on this one. So we're going to want to add on the second stitch of the increase, one of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap a band around our hook four times. And then we're going to start making the stitch. So you just pull it through, back one over the front one. And then after you put the back one over the front one, you're going to want to slide that white band onto that. And then you'll slide the loop from last time over. And then you're going to want to push the loop from last time over the white band. Like that. And then we'll do a single stitch. And because we just did one of these, we don't add one. But we do a single stitch. And then the next stitch we do is going to be an increase. And once again, we'll be adding another one of these white bands. So we'll wrap the band around our hook four times. And for the first stitch of the increase, we're going to slide this guy onto it. And then once, whenever you have these white ones, you want to push the loop from last time like over the white band so this sticks out more. And then we'll go in and we'll do the other half of the increase. 
and then we're gonna do another single stitch but because we just did one without one of these we the next one's gonna have one of these white things so once again wrap it four times around your hook and then you pull basically you just make the stitch but before you put the last one put the back one over the front one you just slide that white band over and then you slide the loop from last time over and then you want to just pull the white one over that last time band and we just keep doing this so this was a single stitch so the next one's an increase so first stitch of the increase has nothing the second stitch has one of these basically we're just do <laughs> increasing every other but like it's kind of confusing because on the increases you technically do two stitches so we're also alternating between on one stitch not doing a spike and then on the next stitch doing a spike so if you're confused that's what's happening there's just so much going on but we're just increasing every other as well as adding spikes on every other stitch which is a little bit different because it's not like you're gonna leave the whole increase without one of these it's just like when you make one stitch even if it's the neck like the next stitch is part of the increase you may add a spike. I hope this is making sense. Um, but yeah. We do a single stitch. And on the first part of the increase again, we're going to do a spike. And if you're confused on what, what, when we had the spikes or how we had the spikes, we just put the white band on before. And then after we push the back one over the front one, we slide that cap band over. And then we slide the band from last time over. But as you can see, this, um, it would look odd if we left it like that, so we just push the white band over it, and it makes a spike. And then our last spike is going to go right here. Then on this last little loop right here, it's supposed to be an increase, so we'll just increase. And then after you do that, we're just going to have to tie this in somewhere. So usually I'll just go down somewhere. It's kind of hard to figure out exactly where you should tie it. I usually just go into like the bottom part of this thing. We'll get a band in the color of my dinosaur. I'll pull it through. Oops. I'll pull it through everything on my hook. Then push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we just kind of have to hide this in our dinosaur. In our dinosaur's head. And that is it for this confusing top thing. Um, I think I might have actually put this too far forward on his head this time. Actually, no, I think it's okay. He's okay. Okay. Yeah. But yay. So now all we have to do is we're just going to add the horns and then his eyes. Um, yeah, I think I accidentally did this thing too far forward. I... It's always ho so hard to tell where you put this, and it's kind of hard to tell till you're really close to the end, so... I'm sorry if you have to move it. I'm just so bad at judging where to put this. If it looks like it's too far forward, just simply undo it and then move it back. It's it's hard to tell. Um, but I'm going to show you how to finish this guy up. If your thing is too far forward or back, sadly, you do have to undo it all and then redo it either a row back or a row forward, depending on the issue. But I'm going to show you how to finish up this Triceratops because I explained how to do this top part right. I just didn't put it right on his head. But yeah. So to make the two bigger horns up here, we're just going to wrap a band around our hook four times to start. And then we're going to get another band. Double it. And then we're going to slide the cap band onto this band. I hate when the cat bang gets all confusing. Get on. Come on. Hold up. It's because my hands are sweaty, so I'm having a struggle. Get on. 
Okay, there we go. So once you've slid the cap band onto that band, you'll just put the other end back on. And once again, double a band. I can't grab it, my hands are so sweaty. Uh, and just chain it up. And then you'll just pull a band that's in the color of the dinosaur through everything on your hook. And you'll be using... Oops. Okay. And then we'll be using this band to tie it in. So I usually do the two bands towards the top of the dino. Well, the two horns. So I'll just pick a spot at the top. I'll just tie it in. And you'll hide your tail. And then we're going to do that again to do the other bigger horn. So once again, grab a band four times around your hook, double the band, slide the cat band onto that band, and then we'll just chain up one more doubled band. And then we'll just pull a band through everything on our hook, and then we'll tie it in about right here. on our dinosaur and my dinosaur looks a little odd right now just because I'm not moving that yet I'll do it later Okay. But once you have the two bigger horns you're just going to want to do the one small horn and the one small horn is basically the same it's just we don't chain up two, we just do the one, so you have your cat band. Slide the whole cat band onto that one band. The cat band that never cooperates. And then once you have it on, you'll just pull a band through everything on your hook. And then we'll tie it in. And you're going to want to tie this on like the tip of the nose. Like that. Okay, I thought his face would look bad, but I actually think it looks fine and I did put the thing in the right spot. Maybe I'm just picky. But now you're just going to want to get your eyes and tie them in. Let me go get my eyes real quick. I forgot them. Okay, everyone always asks me how I get my eyes on bands. So basically, you're going to want a piece of string. Um, I usually use actual like dental floss. It just works the best because it doesn't fray that much. And then you'll get your bead. And you'll just put it on to the dental floss. Then you'll get a band in the color of your dinosaur. We'll put it on the dental floss as well. And then you'll just loop it over like this. Go back through the bead. And then you just pull it and it'll slide your bead onto your band for you. And you'll just do this for both eyes. Then... Go wherever you want the eye. I'm going to put mine like right here. It'll just tie it in. And you just hide the tail. This eye is being difficult. I hate when they turn in like that. I don't know why they do that, but sometimes they'll do that. You see how he's turning? I don't know what... We'll ignore that eye. But you'll just wherever you want the eyes. Come in. We'll just tie them in. And then you'll hide the tails. Yeah, these eyes aren't cooperating. I don't know why, but he, he does not look okay. Let me go fix them. Okay, I gotta fix this head because this thing is way too far forward. I just don't have enough space to put the full face. But, um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial because he's done. Um, I hope your your Triceratops turned out okay. Um, it's always just hard to tell with this guy. It's kind of trial and error. 
I probably would have told it was too far forward sooner. It's just when I'm filming, it's kind of hard to tell where I am. So I hope yours is okay. Um, but yeah, I have a couple things coming out. I don't think I really have... Oh, I do have something I can show you. A sneak peek, maybe, for a future tutorial. Ooh, maybe we might be getting spooky soon. Um, so that's exciting. I'm also working on a couple other Halloween designs. So subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I have so many more things coming. And hopefully the rest of my dinosaurs, because I've also made a Stegosaurus, and I've made the one with the long neck. I forgot the name of that one. So subscribe if you want to see those. They'll come eventually. But, um, yeah, I think that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely, if you made a Triceratops, share it with me on Instagram. My Instagram's Gingersel, in case you don't know. It's the same as here on YouTube. But, yeah. I think that's it for this video, so I'm gonna go. Bye.